Hello there, my fancy friend. Today I am going to show you how I made this custom name sign for a very dear friend of mine's baby nursery. As a matter of fact, this is Maddie right here, and you can see in the background there at the baby shower, the Josie sign is hanging there. Maddie actually sent me the inspiration for this, and I want you just to keep in mind that it is so handy to, to be able to create things for people um, just based on a few color inspirations, photos, and a few of their ideas. I wanna move forward with this project to show you how to do it. Okay, do you remember that my friend sent me a specific color green that she wanted? I took the photo that she gave me and I put it into the color match um, that are the color lab on Dixie Bell Paints website and it told me exactly what colors I could use to make that exact color. It told me 70% umber and 30% cactus. So this is my scientific way of doing it with plastic spoons into a cup. I did seven scoops of brown umber and three scoops of the green cactus. Just stirred this up really well and it made this gorgeous sort of a, an earthy mossy gray green and I'll show you that here on a paper towel. I'll show you the color comparison in just a minute but it's exactly the color that Maddie wanted. Okay, so notice here that I'm painting over a piece of artwork that you saw me paint a few weeks ago. I did not need that anymore. It was for a birthday party. I didn't need the sign, so I'm recycling that sign. But you see that I'm painting right over the words without sanding them back, and I qu quickly realized that the, the edge of the word too and fast were raised, and I needed to sand them down. So you can see here that I stopped painting. I sanded it back and took off that raised edge of each letter and the paint went over beautifully now. So I've covered the entire thing in my custom color mix and it's time to do the artwork. So Maddie sent me pictures, I believe it was of wallpaper, um, that had this white floral drawn, it looks like doodle work, like you're just doodling on paper. Um, and so I'm just, I've got the image pulled up on my tablet and I'm using that as a reference while I'm drawing this out, this, this is a chalk pencil that I'm using and I use this when I draw over darker painted surfaces quite often. And I'm just doing it freehand. I'm just sketching it out with the pencil and then I will go over this with a paint marker once I have it set just the way I like it. All right, once it's set, I'm gonna use this workable fixative. What this does is it will hold my chalk in place so that as I start to uh, slide my hand around, I won't move my chalk marks, it won't smear. Um, I'm just holding that, that chalk mark in place so that I can now use my oil-based paint marker. This is by Sharpie, and it's just an oil-based paint marker, and I'm just following right over the, the sprayed chalk. So you chalk first with your pencil, you spray the, the fixative spray, you let that dry completely, it only takes about 15 minutes, and then you're able to rub over your design and it won't rub off anymore. So now I'm just doodling over my doodle with the oil-based paint marker. And I'm gonna go in and fill these in. So now you can see the designs. They've sort of just been filled in. It kind of looks like filigree, but they've just been filled in with a bunch of squiggly lines. I didn't even use chalk first. I just drew in the squiggly lines, but I'm using chalk now and I'm drawing out Josie's name. I'm just using a script. Um, just as if I was writing her name on a piece of paper. Just don't overthink it. Just go for it. All right, Maddie specifically asked for her name to be done in yarn and for the J and the I to have pom-pom made of yarn. So I found some yarn at Hobby Lobby, just a really big fat yarn, and I am just doing just like you did when you were in elementary school. I'm just using, except I'm using a hot glue gun instead of Elmer's glue. I'm just using my hot glue gun, running down a, a bead of glue along the chalk line, and then just gluing and pressing it in place. And there you see Josie straight across the floral painted board. And now it's time for some pom-poms. Okay, it has been years since I made pom-poms, um, but this is my method. So I'm just using my paint jar. That is about the size that the pom-pom ball will be. That's about how big I wanted it. And then I'm using a quarter just to draw an inner circle here. So I'm making what I call like little donuts. And these will be what I use to wrap my yarn around. So you just wanna trace this out. You wanna cut out your center circle, and then you're gonna cut out the center circle on the second piece as well. 
and then I'm going to stack these two pieces on top of each other and cut out a little notch. You'll see me do that here in just a second. Okay, so I line them up, line my little, and I'm just gonna cut this little notch out so it looks like a C. I'm gonna hold them together and then we're just gonna get the yarn that we're gonna use. I'm using a smaller green and then I also bought a variegated, um, kind of a terracotta peach and pink yarn. I'm gonna start with the green. I just, I just sort of secure it with my thumb and then you can just watch my method here. I just start wrapping and you want it to be really full. So by the time you finish with the green and the other colors that I'm using, you can layer them on top of each other but you want it to be really fat. You don't wanna see any of the white underneath. So when I added the, um, when I brought in the pink and the terracotta color, I also held it in place with my thumb and just did the exact same thing. So I'm just winding, um, making several different layers. I think I ended up with like two or three layers total. And I had just a, a fat little ball of yarn. Okay, so this is the scary part for me. <laughs> you wanna divide your, your two C's that you had stacked together. And if you have sharper scissors, this will be a lot easier. But you just hold it in place and you run the scissors between the two pieces of your pattern and just run that blade along and keep turning your pattern. Separate the cardboard out. I'm using, this is actually the back of a tablet, like a pad. A tablet pad that's what I traced mine out on you need something stronger than paper you do need you know some sort of like thicker card stock or cardboard of some sort so then you want to get a long piece of string separate your two pieces of cardboard run them up between the two pieces bring it around there there you go and you're gonna tie it in a knot you want to make sure your knot slides down in between the two pieces as well there you go, pull it nice and tight and do it one more time. There you go, you got a knot. And now we're gonna remove our donut patterns. We're just gonna pull those off. You can reuse them again, which is a good thing because I'm gonna make two of these pom-poms and just sort of fluff it out and it needs a little haircut because you're gonna have some edges that are, some pieces of yarn are a little bit longer than the other, but looky there, you just give it a little haircut set it aside and we'll make another one now it's time to add those to our sign i just put down a big ball of glue and pressed my pom-pom in place and our j is now complete isn't that cute so cute now let's move over to the eye same thing big ball of glue and we're going to press our second pom-pom down in place just like that and now our eye is complete as well and there we go, we have got Josie, J-O-S-I-E, that's the I right there, and the top of our J. Isn't that precious? It is so cute, and it looks so cute at the baby shower, and it will also be in Josie's room. So I will share that with you guys again later at another date once the nursery's put together. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe. We will be back next Sunday with another video for you. Thank you for joining.